Welcome back to the One in a Million channel. My name is Eunice Chan, and I'm so happy to have you guys here today for this delicious chat and conversation that we are talking about living a life full of freedom, leading with freedom, from a place of freedom, and pursuing, experiencing freedom in all kinds of ways. <laughs> she looks like she just broke her neck but she's just like really, really flexible. Okay, so before I get further distracted, the reason why this topic came about was because for some reason, you guys, like sometimes when like a topic comes up to me, it reoccurs over and over again until I'm like, okay, I need to address this and share this with the world. Um, this topic has been coming up in almost all of my client conversations they're either, either moving cities, changing jobs, changing careers, um, moving to new places, starting new lives, uh, starting new relationships. And it's like this, this theme of moving, this theme of like changing locations. And it's so funny because it all happens, th these conversations all happen simultaneously kind of at the same time. It definitely got my interest and I wanna talk about this because when I, talk about these conversations with my clients, it's like the first thing that usually comes up is, I'm not sure if I can do it. Like, I want to, I have this desire to. And a lot of times it will come up sounding like, oh, I could just see myself living in this new city. I could see myself starting this new life. I could see myself so vibrant and so alive when I start this new relationship, or I can just imagine all the beautiful people I'm going to meet. And then there's like, it's always followed by a but, but this, but I just renewed my lease. I just renewed my rent. I just signed a contract. I'm not sure if my landlord's gonna let me. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to actually physically move there and start a new life. Speaking from experience, a lot of times, like I've actually just, I've moved countries like at least twice. I've moved from Hong Kong to Dubai. I've lived in Hong Kong my entire life. And then I've moved to Dubai, like within six months of planning. And then from Dubai, I lived for one year and then I moved to Mexico, Mexico City in a place where I did not speak the language for. And thankfully I had my husband. But the point being, a lot of times we can't really see ourselves living that new life. We can't even allow ourselves to go that far to visualize like, what would it really be like to allow myself to live this life full of freedom, to pursue what I want, to pursue making my own choices when other people aren't making the choices for me or when it's just, you know, I'm making the choices not because it's the most convenient option, but because I truly desire to be there or I truly desire to do this or I truly desire to take this action. When we find ourselves in this position, it's because we have spent a whole, like a huge part of our lives listening to the opinion of others and because their opinions always came first, there's hardly any space for us to listen to ourselves. And even if we did hear ourselves, there was no space for us to express it. Even if we did try to express it, there was hardly any space for us to follow through or pursue it or actually get to the point where we, we, we go get it. So over time, we start developing a limiting belief of, well, no one's going to listen to me anyway, or maybe like what I want is just so inconvenient and it's so out of the way and it's, it's, it's not what everybody wants. So it's just easier for us to go with what everybody's telling me, right? And it's easy for other people to tell us what we want based on probably what is most convenient for them and what they know about us. Start projecting an image of who they think we are upon us. So we stop exploring what we want. Over time, 
we start to get more and more out of touch with ourselves. This is actually what it means to be out of touch with ourselves. It just means that we stop hearing ourselves. Like, you know, for the people who say, oh, you know, how can I de develop a stronger intuition or how can I um, really live the life that I want? The thing is, you've got to be able to hear yourself. Because if you don't have the opportunity to listen to yourself and you're always listening to others, before you even have that time to make that decision and for you to even think of the action steps to pursue that, that desire, other people have already interjected you with what they think you should do. So here's what I would do if I were in a situation, and this is actually how I overcame it, how I overcame like living a life from not really having that much freedom, living a life of other people telling me what I want, how I should live, how I should behave, um, what my priorities, what, what my priorities are even, and my values completely had an, a 180 flip change because I started to get to know what I want. And then beyond that, I started allowing myself to pursue them. So in this process, it was actually a very uncomfortable process because when we're so used to receiving the input and opinion of others, oftentimes we become very impatient to know what's the next step to take. For example, when other people are so used to giving you their opinion, it takes very little time for them to give it to you. And so you don't really have to sit with the discomfort of knowing what's going to happen. There's very little chance for silence, no time for contemplation or asking yourself, okay, well, there's nothing now, so let's go explore. So the first step is really to create a bit of that distance, to withdraw yourself, not just from people, but to withdraw yourself from the situation where people can constantly inject their opinions upon you so that when you have that distance, you have that space to wait for an answer from within yourself. Meaning that when there's no one to answer for you, to tell you what you want, to tell you what to do, to tell you what, what are your values, then you have to sit with that gap. You'll have to sit with that silence and then ask yourself, oh, what do I want? Where do I want to go? How do I want to spend my afternoon? How do I want to spend my weekend? How do I want to explore this new city by myself? Yes, it is uncomfortable because a lot of us are not used to finding out what we want to do and it's easier to just receive the, the input of others. And so this is the first thing I would do is actually create that space and then allow yourself to sit with the silence and to inform, to inform your decision of what you actually want. And the second thing is even when something does come to you, and this is actually um, something that a lot of my clients have experienced as well, which is, okay, well, I, I received a nudge or an intuition or like a hit or, you know, some, like I, I, I received a pull to be somewhere or do something or pursue something or start a project, but I feel like it's too small for me. I feel like it's just not the right step. I want to take the big step and because the big step is like so far over there and I keep pushing it away. I'll never allow myself to have it, but this thing over here is too small. What ends up happening is because we have a prejudice of this next step that we want to take, we don't allow ourselves to actually pursue it and allow this thing to lead us to the next step. This is something that has held me back from a lot of the choices that I, I made and then you know it wasn't until I actually came to terms that this is the next step. The next step is not where I'm finally destined to be. I'm not going to be stuck here forever. I'm not going to be doing this forever. 
even me being here in Mexico, I don't think that I'm going to be here forever, but I'm here now and that's what matters, you know? Being in this place and growing in this place is probably going to lead more opportunities, it's going to lead more stability, more people, more connections, and the lessons that I need to learn right now in my life into the next place. But had I held certain prejudice, judgments, um, preconceptions about the next step that I think I want to do, and I don't do it because I think that it's either too small or not significant enough or it's not impactful enough, then I won't allow myself to take it. And of course, you'd be stopping yourself from living your life out of freedom. So the first thing that you can allow yourself to do is just take that first step, no matter how small it is, no matter how, no matter where you think you're going to end up, is just allow yourself to drop all preconceptions and prejudice about this one next step and allow yourself to be there. This is what it really means for me to live your life out of freedom because it's not about, oh, I wake up one day and then I have all the freedom to do whatever I want or just be wh wherever I want in the world. It's about making a conscious choice every step of the way with every decision that I make that every decision that I'm making, I am making because I want to, right? I'm going to the cafe to work or study or to connect or network because I want to, not because, you know, people tell me that I should be there or not because, not because people will tell me, oh, it's a good idea, right? Not because I'm doing it under a certain influence, but because I have clarity and alignment with myself that my desires are drawing me there. I think it's also important to start practicing with super small decisions as well. So like if you have difficulty making small decisions for yourself, what makes you think that it's going to be easy to make super big, you know, lifestyle choices of even like moving across the country or moving across the world. So like that, that would be of course quite a stretch. But if you want to start leading a life of freedom, then it means that with every choice you make, you have to make it with you from the center, with you, your feelings being considered, with your priorities being considered. And then from there, you ask, what do I want? What's best for me, right? And that's what it truly means to live a life of freedom not because it's a good idea not because this is how things have always been done not because oh that's how we do it over here but because that's how you do it you are the rule maker of your own world so make your own rules live your own freedom so if any kind of resistance is coming up at all i encourage you to just really sit with that resistance and really ask yourself, like, this is also what I do for myself as well. If I ever tell myself, oh, you can't do this. You can't go there. You can't, um, you can't move across the country. You can't do this. Then I would ask myself, well, why can't I? What is a resistance? You can't start that project. Oh, that's too many things. You, that's too messy. That's too disorganized like okay what is the real resistance there and then you tap into the feeling of what if I actually just allowed myself to have what I want to have this one thing and I'm not talking about the entire lifestyle of freedom I'm talking about what if I could just give myself the freedom to have this one thing and that itself feels so empowering than constantly telling yourself, no, you can't do it, you can't have it, you can't, you can't be this person. And then you start dissolving all kinds of resistance that is like cemented to your heart and then you start dissolving some of that resistance. So that's where we begin. I hope that this message helps you guys to pursue your own lifestyle of freedom and let me know what you guys think about this video because i know with responsibilities with all the things that we have to do it's like 
you know, it, a lot of times it feels like it's, yeah, you know, it's definitely easier said than done, but we can start with the small things that we can feel safe to give ourselves freedom. And that is where we can begin. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I hope you guys enjoyed it and let me know what you think about this topic. I'll see you guys around and I love you so much. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Ciao.